Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we continue our tour of Westwood Village Memorial Park, where we'll find such stars as Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau, Farrah Fawcett, and many more. Join us, won't you? Continuing our tour of Westwood Village Memorial Park, we find ourselves in the southern part of the cemetery, in an area known as the Garden of Serenity, appropriately named with these beautiful fountains and flower beds. Here we'll also find a chapel, where the funerals for many of the stars here took place, including Marilyn Monroe. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out part one. We'll pick up our tour right where we left off at the end of part one, in the southeast corner. Here we find Carl Malden, one of Hollywood's great character actors. He can be seen in such classic films as On the Waterfront and Patton, and won an Oscar for a supporting role in A Streetcar Named Desire. He also made his mark on television in the popular 70s crime series The Streets of San Francisco. Malden was the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences from 1989 to 1992. Along the road on the east side is Eric Douglas. Eric was an actor, the son of Kirk Douglas and the brother of Michael Douglas. While he never did achieve the same level of success as other members of his family, he did have a minor career as an actor and a stand-up comedian. He made his film debut alongside his father in A Gunfight and can also be seen in The Golden Child. He died of an accidental drug overdose at just 46. Next to Eric is the unmarked grave of legendary actor of stage and screen George C. Scott. If a role called for rough edges and gravitas, Hollywood called George C. Scott. His career began on stage, shining in many of his early roles, including Richard III. On screen, he is perhaps best remembered for his title role in Patton. All right, now you sons of bitches. You know how I feel. Mm. I will be proud to lead you wonderful guys into battle anytime, anywhere. That's all. Other notable roles include Anatomy of a Murder, Dr. Strangelove, and as Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol. He was the first actor to refuse an Academy Award, which he won for Patton, famously referring to the whole thing as a meat parade. Next along this row is actor Walter Matthau, known for his role as Oscar in The Odd Couple films, with his frequent co-star Jack Lemmon. The irony is that unless we come to some other arrangement, I'm gonna kill you. That's the irony of it. What's wrong, Oscar? Something wrong with this system, that's what's wrong. I don't think that two single men living alone in a big eight-room apartment should have a cleaner house than my mother. He can also be seen in Grumpy Old Men and The Sunshine Boys. In 1967, he won an Oscar for his role in The Fortune Cookie. Dan Castellaneta, the man who provides the voice of Homer on The Simpsons, stated that originally the voice of Homer was just an impression of Mathau. Next we find the future grave of Erwin Winkler. As of filming, Mr. Winkler is still alive. He is one of Hollywood's great producers. He is the man we have to thank for the Rocky franchise, which earned him an Oscar, and other legendary films like Raging Bull and Goodfellas. More recently, he produced The Wolf of Wall Street. Let's head into the garden area. Just past the fountain on the right is James Coburn, an actor who often played tough guys in action and western films like The Magnificent Seven. He won an Oscar for his role in Affliction. And younger audiences will recognize him as the voice of Waternoose on Monsters, Inc. This has gone far enough, James. She's home now. Just leave her alone. I can't do that. She's seen too much. You both have. By the fountain to the east, we find Peggy Lee. She was a popular jazz singer and songwriter whose career spanned 60 years. She was nominated for 12 Grammy Awards, winning in 1969. She also lent her voice and wrote songs for films like Disney's Lady and the Tramp. He's a tramp, but I love him. Yes, even I have got it pretty bad. Known as Miss Peggy Lee, she was the inspiration for the Muppets character, Miss Piggy. In the garden to the south is the niche of actress and comedienne Fanny Bryce. Her career began on stage in the Ziegfeld Follies, where she was often featured singing her signature song, My Man. 
He's not much. Oh, look. And no hero out of book is my man. She also found great success on the radio as the creator and star of the popular series The Baby Snooks Show. She was portrayed by Barbara Streisand in the musical and film Funny Girl, a role which earned Streisand an Oscar. Back the way we came, right next to the stairs, we find a woman who was mom to millions, Florence Henderson, who played matriarch Carol Brady on the popular 70s TV series The Brady Bunch. Here's the story of a lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold, like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Further along this wall, on the bottom, is another of Hollywood's beloved moms, Doris Roberts. She was a popular actress who won five Emmys for her role on Everybody Loves Raymond. She was also a philanthropist, supporting animal rights and the Children with AIDS Foundation. Near the middle of the east wall is Alexander Courage. He was a composer, mainly for television. He will forever be remembered as the man whose music took us to that final frontier. Space, a final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Just down and to the left is actress Janet Leigh. She can be seen in films like Touch of Evil and Bye Bye Birdie but her place in Hollywood history was cemented in one of the most spine-chilling scenes ever put to film, in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. She was married to actor Tony Curtis. Their daughter is actress Jamie Lee Curtis. Right next to Janet is another popular actor, Jack Klugman. He can be seen in many television programs of the 50s through the 70s, including The Twilight Zone, Quincy M.E., and as Oscar in the TV version of The Odd Couple, the role played on film by Walter Matthau. The role earned him a Golden Globe and two Emmys. In the center lawn is the grave of author Ray Bradbury. He is best known for his dystopian novel, Fahrenheit 451, and for his science fiction and horror collections. Many of his stories were made into film or TV episodes, including I Sing the Body Electric on The Twilight Zone, and The Halloween Tree, which earned him an Emmy. Bradbury is considered one of the greatest 20th century American writers, and his work was influential on many artists, including Steven Spielberg. On the wall just north of Ray is band leader Les Brown. He was a jazz musician whose big band, Les Brown and his Band of Renown, entertained audiences for over 60 years. The band was also the house band for the Steve Allen Show and the Dean Martin Show. If you watched our tour of Forest Lawn Glendale, you'll remember our visit to two of the three Andrews sisters. Here we find the third, Patty Andrews. The Andrews sisters were a popular trio who sang swing and boogie woogie in close harmony in the 30s and 40s. They were one of the most popular singing groups of all time. A mere to shame, again I'll explain, it means you're the fairest in the land. I could say Bella, Bella, even say Wunderbar, each language only helps me tell you how grand you are. In the early 50s, Patty broke from the group to pursue a solo career but would reunite with her sisters several years later. To the left we find actor Brian Keith. He is perhaps best remembered for his role as Uncle Bill on the popular TV comedy Family Affair, a role which earned him three Emmy nominations. He can also be seen in Disney's The Parent Trap. Later in life he suffered from emphysema and lung cancer. He died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the age of 75. His daughter Daisy, who had a brief career as an actress, had committed suicide two months earlier at just 27. She is interred here with her father. 
If you watched our tour of Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, you'll recall our visit to TV's Nelson family. Ozzie, Harriet, and younger son Ricky are interred there. Here we find the elder son, David. He starred with his family in the quintessentially 50s sitcom The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. He can also be seen in The Big Circus, and his final film appearance in Crybaby. He created the popular game show Jeopardy! Seven seconds contestants, good luck. The correct response? Who was Merv Griffin? Did you get it right? Not only did he create the show, he even wrote that iconic theme music. In addition to Jeopardy! he also created Wheel of Fortune, and hosted his own talk show, The Merv Griffin Show, from 1965 to 1986. His epitaph cleverly reads, I will not be right back after this message. Next to Griffin is actress Farrah Fawcett. She burst onto the scene in the 70s TV series, Charlie's Angels. Her iconic hairstyle would inspire a generation of girls, and her infamous red bathing suit poster would adorn the walls of nearly every boy in the 1970s, becoming the best-selling poster ever. Some of her film roles include Logan's Run and Saturn III. Five years before her death, Farrah led a Monarch Butterfly release ceremony to commemorate our next star, Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney was one of the most popular stand-up comedians of the 20th century, famous for his catchphrase, I get no respect. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I know I'm ugly. I asked a bartender to make me a zombie. Told me God beat him to it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you no know when you're ugly, all right? Well, Halloween, my wife sends the kids out dressed like me. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the whole story. I'll write the whole story, okay? All right. I mean, I mean, you know when you're ugly. Well, last Halloween, a kid tried to pull my face off. <laughs> And my kids, they flip a coin to see who has to kiss me goodnight. And I was an ugly kid, too. I told my old man, never took me to the zoo. He said, if they want you, they'll come and get you. <laughs> Boy, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't get no respect. He can also be seen in several comedies, including Caddyshack and Easy Money. Let's head around to the garden to the south. On the right, we find legendary actor Jack Lemmon in His Grave. Jack played the neurotic neat freak Felix to Walter Matthau's slobbish Oscar in The Odd Couple. Other films include Some Like It Hot, Glen Gary Glen Ross, and The Apartment, which earned him an Academy Award nomination. I love you, Miss Kubelik. Three. Queen. Did you hear what I said, Miss Kubelik? I absolutely adore you. Shut up and deal. It's fitting that Jack and his frequent on-screen partner Walter Matthau are buried so close to one another. Next to Jack is actor and comedian Carol O'Connor. He is perhaps best remembered for his role as Archie Bunker in the TV sitcom All in the Family. Fans of Family Guy might note some inspiration taken from that show. Boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Songs that made the hit parade. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. He can also be seen as Chief Gillespie on In the Heat of the Night. Next we find one of the great writer-directors of Hollywood's Golden Age, Billy Wilder. He was working in Berlin during the 20s and 30s when the rise of the Nazi party drove him to leave Germany, first to Paris, then eventually to Hollywood. His first hit was the 1944 noir film, Double Indemnity, considered by many as one of the seminal films of the genre in that era, along with another of his legendary films, Sunset Boulevard. You see, this is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. The versatile filmmaker also shown in comedy with films like Some Like It Hot, The Seven Year Itch, and The Apartment starring Jack Lemmon, which earned Wilder Oscars for producing, writing, and directing. 
At the end of this garden is Peter Falk. He will forever be remembered for his role as Lieutenant Columbo on the long-running crime drama Columbo. His character ranked number seven on TV Guide's list of 50 greatest TV characters. The role earned him four Emmys and a Golden Globe. Younger audiences will remember him as the lovable grandpa reading the story of the Princess Bride. Oh, Bob. That's right. When I was your age, television was called books. And this is a special book. It was the book my father used to read to me when I was sick, and I used to read it to your father. And today, I'm going to read it to you. Across from Peter is Sam Simon, one of the men who developed and brought the world The Simpsons, the longest running scripted TV series ever. <laughs> On his gravestone is Bart Simpson with his dog Santa's Little Helper. Sam was a strong advocate for animal rights and started his own foundation, the Sam Simon Foundation, to rescue shelter cats and dogs. Later in life, one of his most cherished companions was a rescue dog named Columbo. There's a monument for Columbo here, ironic given the proximity to Peter Falk. If you're a fan of soap operas, then you may unknowingly be a fan of William J. Bell. He created and wrote The Young and the Restless and The Bold and the Beautiful. He also wrote over 2,000 episodes of Days of Our Lives. Finally, we pass the chapel and head around to the next garden east. Here we find Sage Stallone, son of Sylvester Stallone. He made his acting debut alongside his father as Rocky Balboa Jr. in Rocky V. In addition to acting, he was also a budding filmmaker. His directorial debut, a short film called Vic, won the 2006 Boston Film Festival Best New Filmmaker Award. His promising career was cut far too short when he died at the age of 36 of coronary artery disease. The exact date of his death is unknown. And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. Hmm, boy there's gotta be a story behind this one.